All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started talking about uh, the Youth Librarianship Program. And I call it a people-centered program because in my experience as a public librarian and as a professor, uh, what the main experience and point of being a librarian is, is to connect with your community, connect with individual community members, develop relationships so that you can serve them. So why would you consider a career in youth librarianship? Um, because it's great. Um, it's definitely something, um, a career that many of us have enjoyed. Um, it is about working with people. So you, um, while we do work with materials and books, the primary focus is getting those books and other materials into the hands of people. So that is the first point that you may want to consider. Um, the second is that youth librarianship is great because it's a community-based uh, experience. You're typically working in a public library, and even though you may be assigned to be a children's or a teen librarian, that doesn't mean that you uh, only work with those people. You have an opportunity to work with parents of little newborns, you have the opportunity to work with teens, you have an opportunity, opportunity to work with siblings. It's one of my very favorite parts about um, youth librarianship, the opportunity to really um, be with families and, and be in a community. And then lastly, youth librarianship is equity driven. Um, a prime value for librarianship is um, equal access and democracy and diversity. These are some of our prime values. And you really see that in youth librarianship. Uh, we make efforts to um, make sure people have the opportunities to move forward and participate in society. So what does a children's librarian do? I mentioned there's children's and there's teen services librarians. Now some libraries are smaller and maybe you will be responsible for both sides when you take on a youth librarianship position, uh, but many libraries have this divided. Uh, so these uh, illustrations here are from the Association of Library Services for Children which is the primary professional organization that uh, serves children's librarians. And you can see here, basically a children's librarian's first priority is to establish relationships with children and families. You plan services for them. You organize programs and materials, um, whether that's you putting on a program or bringing in um, people in the community to put on programs. You collaborate with local organizations. Uh, you advocate. That is a big part of being a librarian for kids and for families, is you advocate for their needs and their participation and their um, ability to be a part of the library and also out in the community. Because sometimes grown-ups forget what kids need and you need to advocate for them at times. And then uh, a big part of librarianship is continuing to develop knowledge and skills so that you can do a better job and, and continue to serve well. Similarly, uh, teen librarians do the same thing except for uh, children's librarians work with kids from birth to about 11 and around 12, they shift into teen services. Um, so you're doing the same kind of work except you're doing it with um, middle school through high school and then maybe a little bit beyond as they transition into um, either college or career opportunities. And just like uh, I mentioned OSC for children's librarians, teen librarians have the Young Adult Library Services Association. And you'll see here the snapshot is um, their description of what a teen services librarian does. So in order to be an official youth librarian in a public library, you must earn a master's degree in library information science from an accredited university, which we are at UNT. Uh, you, if you enter our program, we have three required courses that give you a firm basis in uh, information science theory and information science practices. Uh, in those courses, you do need to have a B or higher. And then you will have elective courses, uh, some guided electives that we've uh, determined that are good experiences and preparation for people to enter the field. 
And there's also, you have the opportunity to select uh, some general electives. On top of that, there is an additional three credits for a practicum, which is a great experience. Every student is required to do a practicum, uh, typically at the end of their program, for 120 hours in a public library doing youth services tasks. Now, you can apply to waive that if you have worked on youth services type tasks in a public library for at least six months. And then the last piece of earning the degree is you will be doing a portfolio, which you'll start building from your first semester. And I will let my colleagues speak about that um, a little more. Um, and then you finish up with a capstone experience in that. Okay, so why should you choose us here at the University of North Texas? Um, first off, we are a tier one research focused university. So that means that the professors that you interact with, we're out there uh, doing research in communities, in libraries, in issues that are related to um, you doing your job and doing it better. So for example, I just put in for a grant uh, to work with rural libraries and get educational radio content going during this time of um, being in between schooling because of the pandemic. So that's an example of um, a project that has research that's directly applicable to your job. Um, we also are strongly focused on engaging in multiple literacies. So literacy is not just about reading and writing. It's also about things like data literacy. It's about um, financial literacy. It's about cultural literacy. There's all kinds of ways and important ways to interact with the world. Um, and we wanna help you support the youth that you interact with into their lifelong learning and being able to be literate in many ways. Um, and lastly, we are accredited by the American Library Association to um, provide library studies, and we're also recognized nationally. All right, so that is my part of the presentation, um, and I am happy to talk to you more. Uh, there's my office phone number and my email and my Twitter handle. Um, I do uh, have my office there, but uh, currently with the quarantine, I'm not in my office, um, but just wanted to know you guys know that just for the future. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and my colleague can take over and talk about, I made you co-host, so should, do you got okay. your chart? <laughs> Great, I'm going to share my screen and pull up this PowerPoint, here we go. Nice to see you all, it's so nice to see people, yay. <laughs> you know we've all been a little starved for human interaction, I think, and someday maybe we'll be together in a room, <laughs> an actual room, but, but this is good, you know, for, for what we can do right now. So I am Trisha Kwan, and I'm so excited to talk to you tonight about our program here at UNT for the school libraries. I'm trying to move my little there you go. I'm going to put you up here on the top. All right. So um, I am the practicum coordinator here for the school library program. And I know um, Dr. Schultz Jones is in the meeting too. Hi, Dr. Schultz Jones. She's out there and she is our director for the school library program. So whatever questions I don't know the answers to, she can jump in. <laughs> Yay. It's great to have her here. But I am just going to tell you a little bit about the details of becoming a school library librarian and why you would want to do that. I highly recommend it as a profession. Number one, school librarians have huge influence. This is one of the things I loved best about being a school librarian. You really do have the opportunity to impact every single student and faculty member in your school and it feels amazing <laughs> it's really a great helping profession you know back in the day i think we used to think oh i love books so i'll become a librarian which is great and we, i think we all love books who are librarians but we also love people and this gives us a chance to combine those two things that love for books and that love for people into one amazing occupation that i have to say is never dull 
and never boring. And there's a lot of freedom and excitement in it. And I just can't tell you enough good things, but I will tell you, you will be very influential. And I haven't met a librarian yet who's not. And I, I just love that about being a librarian. And in a school, you know, you're kind of famous. <laughs> All the students will know you, they will love you. And it is just an opportunity to really make a difference with every single one to, to try to instill a love of reading, number one, love of technology, a lot of other things. We'll talk about just a couple of things. Librarians wear so many hats, like literally hundreds of hats. But here are a few things that I think we do that really make a difference. Number one, we provide a welcoming environment. I did some research years ago where I asked administrators, what do you think really makes a good school librarian? And this providing a welcoming environment environment was the number one answer. They said, you know, it's really all about customer service. So making people feel welcome and like they can come to the library to either look for information or to look for books or to collaborate with each other, though that was so important to administrators. And that is essential. And depending on your library, you want to figure out what can I do to make this the place where everyone wants to come. You might have heard the saying that the library is the hub of the school? Completely true. I've also heard it called the heart of the school. Also true. <laughs> Everything should be happening in the library and it makes it so exciting. So that's one thing that we do. We also encourage a lot of enthusiasm for books. Let's face it, there are so many things that vie for the attention of students as far as like what they're going to do with with technology here's my phone you know there's all this gaming stuff it's really hard to get kids interested in reading but I think you're probably like me on a Friday night there's nothing I'd rather do than sit down with a really good book <laughs> there's just nothing better and and you know what we know is that the better kids read the easier education is for them the higher levels of education they attain the more happy they are eventually with life I mean there's a lot of amazing research about how just being engaged readers impacts your life so when you think about trying to influence students to become engaged readers just know that you're changing their life by doing that this is so important we also collaborate a lot with teachers you know um, we're kind of in the business of providing resources not only for teachers but for students for parents it's kind of like an outreach to the whole community in fact so that collaboration part that is essential and we talk about that a lot in our coursework a couple other things. We, of course, are heavily involved with technology. This is when I did that research about principals. This is another thing they loved because what they said is, you know, we have all this technology, but teachers are kind of reluctant sometimes if they don't know how to use it. They don't want to say that they don't know how to use it, but librarians can really make this bridge in there where they can help teachers to feel more comfortable with technology and share resources that they know about. And especially in this crazy time where we've been in with this pandemic, I've talked to multiple librarians who said, you know, suddenly like I became best friends with so many teachers <laughs> because they really needed help with resources. And I was able to say, well, let me do this and let me find this for you and send them information that was really important important for their work and for teaching those kids in that online environment. So this is something that we definitely do. We also stay on top of those cutting edge trends. You know, I, I hear different things. It used to be that technology was changing every two years and then every year. And I think it's about every six months. <laughs> it's like rapidly changing. So we always have our work cut out for us staying on top, but it makes the field so exciting and just never ever boring. And we talk about technology quite a bit in your coursework and about those cutting edge trends, which are just so important, just an essential part of the job. Now, there are two ways to become a librarian in a school librarian in Texas, and this applies to almost any state. So if you're visiting with us from another state, this applies almost anywhere that you are. But, but each state might have a little bit different um, requirements, but our master's degree in library science 
usually what will meet your state's requirements. So if you don't have a, if you already have a master's degree in some other field though, you can just take our certification courses. So there's those two options. Master's degree in, with the certification courses, so it includes those. Or if you already have a master's degree, you can take just the nine certification courses. And I have a slide with those courses here too that I'll show you. Oh, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> this is, these are the nine certification courses that are required. And, and uh, you can see Bs are good. That means that we do require at least an A or a B in all of these courses. And all of these courses are required along with a master's degree. So if you already have a master's degree, you could just take these nine courses. However, you only need three more courses in order to earn the master's degree. So we tell people it just makes a lot of sense. Even if you already have a master's degree, it's just three more courses. And so that master, that MLS degree can open other doors for you. You know, you just never know what will happen in your life. And, and I have had multiple students since I've been here at UNT who have gone into college libraries or public libraries. So with that MLS degree, you can be Become not just a school librarian, this will open doors into other fields for you. With the school library certification only courses, it's not as guaranteed that you could walk into some of those other jobs, but you know, you just never know whether that might be an option that you want to pursue. So it's something to keep in mind, even if you already have a master's degree, just three more courses. We call those courses core courses. All of our students in the Masters of Library Science program and the Information Science program take those three courses. And this is in Texas, you are required to have a master's degree plus the school library certification courses. If you're doing the master's degree with us, you're getting those school library certification courses within that coursework. And then you're also required to do a couple of other things. And I'm gonna talk about those here in a second. One of those things is And this is a question that we get a lot. Sorry, my, my computer doesn't want to advance to the next slide. I think it's just saying it's tired. We have an electronic portfolio, which Sarah mentioned um, earlier tonight. So our electronic portfolio, we've been doing this for a while, but now we're doing it as something that's called our capstone project. So rather, we, we have also going on right now something called an end of premise comprehensive exam and it's just a nightmare <laughs> and and it's basically a week of writing three papers and you don't have to do that <laughs> this is the good news we have started an electronic portfolio instead the end of program exam was just very high pressure and um you know it didn't it didn't necessarily help you a lot going into your career but with your electronic portfolio this is a place where you get to showcase everything that you're learning as a student and in your practicum and then in your professional experience you can take this with you after you graduate as well. So you will have access to your electronic portfolio starting in your first semester. We actually have a template. And um, when you start coursework, we just get you started on that electronic portfolio and tell you what to do and how to do it. And then you work on it and you add content to it every semester throughout your program. So by the last semester before you graduate, then you're finishing up your electronic portfolio. And faculty will take a look and say, woohoo, Ooh, you did great. <laughs> it looks fantastic. So that is like our capstone requirement. No comprehensive exam for you. Yay. Uh, for school library students, te the Texas Education Association also requires, I'm sorry, the Texas Education Agency requires 160 clock hours of practicum. Now you might say, wow, that seems like a lot. And, and it does. But the good news is we also spread that out over the whole course of your master's degree program. So in your very first class that you take, when you take 5001 school librarianship, you will find a mentor. If you're already working in a school, a lot of times people go with the library mentor, who, the uh, librarian in their school, because it's easy, you know, to accumulate hours with that person. So you would start your very first semester and I've averaged it out. If it takes you two years 
to do your master's degree, you would average about two hours a week during the semesters as far as like time that you would spend in the library to accumulate those 160 hours. Now there are up to like 20 hours you can get through webinars or going to conferences that involve library work, but those 160 hours are required by the Texas Education Agency. And you know what, they're great. The, the, I think this is the fun part because this is where you get to apply everything that you're learning in class and get to see what is it really like to be a school librarian and, and hopefully work with someone who's amazing. We have a list of a lot of amazing mentors who are just happy to guide students and help them to learn more about being a librarian. Now, if you live in Texas, you will also take the, the what we call the Texas certification exam before you graduate. One of the things that I love about the way UNT handles this, in your, in your 50, 90, your practicum class, at the very end of your program, you take a class that's actually called practicum. And in that class, one of the things we do is study for the exam, the certification exam, and help you to pass it. What I like about this is if you you don't pass the exam you couldn't get certified so you need to pass the exam some universities and I'm not gonna name any names <laughs> but some universities I'll let you graduate without first passing the exam. So then you're kind of on your own. You have to, you know, figure it out on your own because they're like, yeah, well, that's a certification requirement, not a graduation requirement. But we are invested in your success in passing this exam. So we have a lot of study materials if needed, and we have a process to really help you in that very final course to get that certification exam out of the way. I mean, it's kind of like I just take your hand and hold it and say let's do this <laughs> and we just get you through that exam um, together and and so that is our goal that everyone will pass that exam before you graduate so that you can just walk right into a library job that is the hope are all of our classes offered online and the answer is drum roll yes <laughs> all of our classes are offered online Looks like Trisha froze for a second here. Oh, there she is. Oh, did Good. I? Did I back? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <You're back. laughs> I was just saying, I kind of miss meeting in person. Um, class but you know a lot of us couldn't do the degree without being able to do it online so for that reason it's fantastic and I have to say I think you will love the coursework we do not load you up with busy work everything that you do is related to something you need to know to be a school librarian if you're doing it there's a reason for it so we're not going to give you um, silly things that take hours and hours and you know that aren't valuable to you. We want to make this as, as valuable and usable as possible. And every class is offered every semester, which is amazing too. So at some places, it's like if you don't catch this class in the fall, well, then you have to wait till the next fall to take it or something like that. That's, that doesn't ever happen here. We offer every class every semester. So if you miss it in the fall, you can take it in the spring. If you miss it in the spring, you can take it in the summer. So I really love that about UNT's program too. Why should you choose UNT? I think this is a great question. Number one, we are ranked number 10 in the nation for school library media programs. That just tells you that people who are looking are saying, hey, they have a really good program there at UNT. That just means that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're teaching you what you need to know to be a successful school librarian. And so I think that's just really important. That's like, you know, that's it's like getting a gold medal or something. <laughs> it's super important. We're also ALA accredited. Not every university in Texas that offers a school library certification program is ALA accredited, but we are. What that means for you is here again, when you get that master's degree, you can work in a school library, but you can also work in other types of libraries. So that gives you that diversity that I think is really important. 
And then, of course, we're going to help you pass that um, certification exam. Also, also very important. All right, we want to answer any questions that you have. I look so thin in my little Bitmoji picture there. I just love that. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my vision board. Maybe that'll help me to get focused on not eating. This this quarantine just makes me want to eat. I don't know about you guys, but, but ugh. We would love, though, to answer any questions that you have. So if you want to, you can unmute yourselves if you would like and just ask questions right out loud. Or if you prefer to type in the chat, that is also fine. We are good either way. And Trisha, I'm going to put up, I'm going to stop our recording and then